Oh, hello. What's up? Steve DeCasa here with another episode of Ask Steve. This is episode six. Um, I always start these videos saying that I'm apologizing for the fact that I haven't had a video up in so long and blah, blah, blah. But this time, I have had a video up pretty recently. It's my uh, Filmmaking 101, Photography 101 video. It's a tutorial for beginners, someone who's never touched a video before. Um, I would say, please, just pause this video right now if you haven't seen it, just go over there and watch it, if, if that's something that you need, a tutorial for a basic DSLR photography. So I'll put the link right here. It's going to float here for a minute or two. Go check it out if you haven't seen it. I'm really proud of it. It's really awesome. I've been getting a lot of great feedback on it. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so ask Steve. Now, I, I tend to ramble on on these a lot. I tend to just go forever and ever. I really have just one question that's like awesome, that uh, is a great question that I want to I wanna talk about uh, in, at length. But there's two other questions, sort of, um, that I want to get to first that are shorter. Not any like worse. You know, questions are awesome. Please send me questions. But um, I'll, start with, I'll start with this. This is actually a correction. This is a correction on a tutorial that I've had up for a long time that I've had great response to. It's a, it's a Filmmaking 101 tutorial. It's all about how to create high quality audio on a budget. It's basically a tutorial using this device right here, the, uh, the Zoom H4n. It's what I'm using right now to record audio through lavaliers wirelessly, and I'm going to sync it up later. So if you like the audio, that's what I'm using. This tutorial is a tutorial about, in general, how to record audio on a set. Specifically, it's about that specific device because that's what I'm using in, in it. But you know, you could take the knowledge you've learned in that tutorial and apply it to other devices once they get popular or once, once they come out. But in that tutorial, I mentioned that in the settings of the H4n, there's a setting to select what kind of batteries you're using. One selection says alkaline, and one selection says Ni, like MH, like nic nickel metal hydride is, is what it's called. And a, I said in the video that there's alkaline and then there's lithium. Now, lithium batteries are batteries just have lithium in them, and they last a really long time. I really love those kinds of batteries. But I was incorrect. Lithium batteries are not the same as nickel metal hydride batteries. A viewer of mine, I'm hoping they're a subscriber of mine, but a, a viewer of mine, his name is Jens Astrup, he commented on that video and said, you mix up nickel metal hydride and lithium batteries. Nickel metal hydride are rechargeable batteries that gives you 1.2 volts, and lithium batteries give you 1.5 volts just like alkalines. That's why you must choose which one you are using. Thank you, Jens. I obviously did not know that, so I'm always learning. I'm very appreciative of when someone tells me something I don't know, because it's just going to add to... Um, to what I know. I don't take offense. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that, that for that correction. So there's my correction. Um, the nickel metal hydride are for rechargeable batteries. Now, here's a question that I just got recently about that uh, video. So this is from a, a gentleman named um, Marcello. Marcello Coletti. He says, hey, Steve. I've just watched your video, Filmmaking 101, How to Record High Quality Audio on a Budget, and I found it great. Good work. Thank you. Uh, now I'm just wondering about batteries. You said you would rather use lithium batteries instead of nickel metal hydride batteries. So a question came to mind. Would you recommend using rechargeable batteries? Or there might be something wrong with them? Thanks for your concern. Love your videos. Very apropos question. I've never used rechargeable batteries on the H4n. So I don't have really any experience with it. I'm sure they're fine, but Marcello, if you use rechargeable batteries, the nickel metal hydride batteries, make sure you change the setting in the H4n to accommodate that. Go from alkaline, switch it down to nickel metal hydride. In the, in the, in the uh, menu it says Ni-MH. I just like to say nickel metal hydride because it's actually easier than saying NIMH. That's just for me at least. Now, I don't use rechargeable batteries often. I've worked with production companies that do, uh, and they use really, they use like professional ones, not like the kind you get in, in like Dwayne Reed or, or Walgreens or anything, just like the green Energizer ones. Um, they, they, this, the production companies I work for, they buy online like the professional grade like AA ones that 
have like a certain amount of cycles you can go through and all that stuff. But I, I don't know. I've never, I don't know how fast the H4N will eat up those. Um, I'm not sure. It's funny because I did use lithium batteries in my H4N for, for years before I found this out that, that the nickel metal hydride was for uh, rechargeable, not lithium. And honestly, I didn't really see a difference. I mean, in my brain, I'm using the H4N on the nickel metal hydride setting with lithium batteries in it, which should have been set on the alkaline setting. And from my point of view, the H4N is lasting forever, you know, just n never eating up batteries. And I haven't suffered any performance lag. The thing never screwed up, never dropped a recording, never just stopped for any reason, never, never powered off for any reason. So um, it's weird. But now, since I know this, even if I'm using lithium batteries in it, I'll still keep it on alkaline. And I haven't seen, I really haven't seen any difference. So the thing's not going to explode if you keep it on one setting or the other. Regardless, I'd go by the book. If you use rechargeable batteries, stick it on the nickel metal hydride setting. If you use lithium or regular batteries, make sure it's on the alkaline setting. And Marcello, if you do use the rechargeable batteries and you do have it on the right setting and you find something worth telling me, please send me a message and let me know. Okay, moving on to the next thing. This isn't really a question. I mean, it is a question, but it's not like a helpful question, but I figure if I'm gonna answer this guy's question, I might as well answer it in person. And I think it's beneficial to hear the answer for, for filmmakers out there. So a gentleman named Scott Telly, which is a funny name for a filmmaker, Telly, because if, if you're in the business, you've heard of Telesini or Teles Telesini. Uh, it just means, uh, you know, I don't know. T look it up. Look up the word Telesini. T E L E C I N E. I don't, well, you know what? I'll look it up. Dictionary. The broadcasting of a movie on television. The broadcasting of a movie on television. Telesini. Wikipedia is the process of transferring motion picture film into video. So, this guy's name is Scott Telly, and there's a word called Telesini. Pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, let's, let's get on to the question. So he says, hey DCF, I'm assuming that means D Casa Film. I like that because the C is a capital, so DCF, I think that's cool. I'm kind of new to the YouTube game, but have been shooting video for some time. I'd love to hear your thoughts on my recent video post titled, Lighting Setup for Video Shoot. Any feedback from a pro like you would be super helpful. Thank you. Now, I've checked out the, the video, um, lighting setup for a video shoot. It's like a behind the scenes of another video. Um, so here's the video that it, he shot, the, the, the produced video here. And down here, this is the behind the scenes video. This is, this is the one he wants me to look at. I looked at both. You can go check those out and come back if you want or you can watch them later, whatever you want. Scott, great job. It looks gorgeous. The background was great, the, 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 um, the exposure was great, the audio is great. So once again, great work, Scott. But there's one, if I had to really pick something to critique, there's one little thing, and let's pop it on my computer screen right now and talk about it. So here's the video, guys. Um, once again, I don't have the audio on, so you can't, you can't hear anything, but um, I think it looks great. The exposure is great. He, he has a three-point lighting setup. He has um, his key light is here. You can see because there's a little bit of a shadow on his nose here. And uh, he's got a, a, a backlight hitting him, so you can see back here. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Yeah, You can see back here on his shoulders, there's a, a nice um, backlight, like hair light, even though he has no hair. Nice hair light hitting him, separating him from the background, which looks great. Look at these cool trusses and the blue light. Great job. Now, there's one thing. Just one little thing I'd critique on, um, Scott, and that's right up in here in his glasses. You can see the LED uh, lights that you're using. You can see the reflection there. Um, and, that, and also the, the angle of this shadow here is sort of a giveaway too um, that the light is a little too low. Now, is this really a big problem? No, it's not really a huge problem at all. Um, no one's gonna care, no one's gonna notice. But if, if, like I said, if I had to pick something to critique, I would say in the future, if it looks good, if, I mean, obviously the first thing, the first thing that's important is the, li the lighting on the subject has to look good. He obviously needs his glasses because I saw your behind the scenes and I know he was reading a teleprompter. Without my glasses or contacts, I can't see anything. So I understand he needs the glasses. If he didn't need the glasses, let's say he didn't have a teleprompter, 
maybe ask him to take them off if he's comfortable with it. You know, you have to, some people are self-conscious. Um, they like it with their glasses on or off. But I would say if you could in the future, just, just like have him look at the camera and you know, angle it so you can see that reflection and then raise the light. Just, just, just raise it just until you can't see it anymore and then angle it down. Now hopefully the lighting will still look good. The angle of the shadow will change a little bit. It'll go from being this way to just slightly lower. But that's, that should be fine, especially with some fill light. So long it, it doesn't look like your fill light is reflecting at all. So you can keep the fill light there and fill in those shadows. That's what the fill is for, to fill in the shadows. But um, other, than, other than just that one thing, I think it, the quality looks great. And I think you did a great job. Like I said, if I had to pick one thing, it would just be that. Um, but it's not, a, it's not really a big deal. As a video person, it's like, it, you know, it, honestly, <laughs> Not having a reflection will impress only video people because no one else is going to notice that kind of thing. But you, you show this to a video person, they're going to see that and they're going to go, ah, oh, you know, you needed that, just, just that little extra bit to make it like perfect. I'm really trying to think of anything else I could think of. I mean, it, if you had a second camera, you could get a cool side angle or whatever, but, you know, I think he did a good job. And he did a good job too reading the teleprompter. Um, yeah. Okay, so here's the last question. It's the big one. It's the one I'm going to ramble on about. It's from a gentleman named William Ardani, or Ardani. I'm from Queens, New York, so I say Ardani. <laughs> like my mom, she doesn't say safari, she says safari, and that bugs me, but I don't know. All right, Ardani. William Ardani. Uh, his question is, hi, man. Hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. My name is William, and I would like to become a good cinematographer. Awesome. Uh, I found your three-point lighting video very useful and interesting, but I would like to know more about lighting. I have some questions. Okay, and there's two. One for question one. Set practicals on set. Question mark. Set practicals on set. Do they really light the subjects or not? Are they dimmed up or down? Are they con are they consumer lights or film lights? I'll explain that further in a minute. And number two. How do you mix together different temperatures of light? For example, in an exterior night with moonlight and artificial light, uh, interior day with different sources, a TV, window light, candle, etc. Uh, I hope you will be happy to help me to understand these things. Thank you, William. Thank you for your question. Great questions. In fact, I, I messaged him right away when I saw this and I said, I'm going to answer this. I'm going to ask Steve. It's way too much to type. Um, and they were great questions. So the first one, let me, let me just back up to the first one. Uh, set practicals on set, or practicals on set. Do they really light the subjects or not? Are they dimmed up or down? Are they consumer lights, blah, 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 blah. First of all, not many, I mean, not everybody would know what a practical is. A practical light is, in a, in a movie, in a narrative fiction movie, um, when you have a practical, it's a light source that you can see in the shot. So, for instance, um, I mean, just for instance, I have my phone here, right? And uh, let's say I turn the flashlight on, right? So here's the flashlight, right? Now let's say I let's say in the movie or something. Let's say let's say this isn't a phone. Let's say it's just a lamp, and there's a lamp chilling right here. Now you can see the light on my face, what it's doing. So this is not a phone. This is a lamp. Now if I'm sitting here in a in a movie and I'm talking to you, and there's a lamp and it's shining on me. The light coming from the lamp and hitting me is a practical light. It's something that's in the shot, in the frame, that is emitting its own light and hitting the subject. That's called, that's called a practical. Now what William is wondering is, is this practical really lighting the subject? Like is this light on me right here? Is that really coming from the practical? Or is there another light, like right outside the frame, like right here, like an actual film light that's hitting me? And this one is, it looks like it's on, but it's dimmed so low that you can't even really, in, in our own real life, it's, the light is dimmed so low that it's not doing anything to the subject. It's not doing anything like this. And what's really lighting me is, a, is an actual film, standard film light that's just outside the frame that's angled at me sort of faking that this light is actually hitting me. That's what, that's what he's asking, I believe. Like, he says, uh, do they really light the subjects or not? That's what he's saying. Are they dimmed up or down? Do they, are they considered light for film light? Um, 
Now, this is, this, is a, this is a cell phone. It's obviously, it's not a lamp, but let's say it is a lamp, right? It's hitting me, and it's lighting me, and it looks pretty good. So, why not have the practical light you up? Doesn't have to be. So, here's, that's a good question. The answer to that question is sometimes the practicals really are lighting your subject, and sometimes they're not. It can be really hard to tell. Now, I was, watching a, um, I was watching an old movie with my father recently. It was an Elvis movie. And they were in a bedroom. And on the wall were sconces. And if you don't know what a sconce is, it's basically a light that goes into the wall. And there's a little fixture. So if, like this is the wall. It just comes out of the wall. And it's like a little lamp or a candle or something. It's called a sconce. Now, I could tell from watching it that those sconces weren't really doing anything because I could see a shadow that was doing a weird angle. If the sconce light, if the lamp on the sconce was really on, it would be creating a different kind of shadow. The light source would be here, so the shadow would be down here. But the angle of the shadow was like sideways, so you could tell that really there was a light here lighting up the wall. So in that situation, there was an actual film light. It was probably a set with no roof. There was probably no ceiling. So there was probably a light above where the ceiling should be, lighting the wall and lighting the set and casting that shadow of the sconces fixture on the wall. So I, I, I saw that and I go, those sconces are doing nothing. That, that's just an actual light. But um, I haven't really worked on a film with Elvis before. I haven't really shot anything from the 50s when, when cinema was in its golden era, its studio Hollywood era. I've shot independent features, independent films, short films, low budget films, and um, I've worked with professional DPs who are indie professional DPs who've shot on 35 and shot on Super 16 and, and, and things like that. And um, one of the things I picked up from them was there's nothing wrong with using practicals. Um, in fact, some people seek to use practicals. Some people with, some DPs, including myself, would rather light a set, if they can, with practicals than, than use film lighting. Just because it, it just feels right, you know what I mean? Like, you, it, it's, it feels real in a way. Um, I shot a short film recently where part of the scene was lit with actual film lights, but the second half of the scene was lit primarily with a, with a practical, with just a lamp. And I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, here it comes. Here's part of the scene. Uh, I apologize for the quality. It's a low-res version. Uh, this was shot on the Red Scarlet uh, over the summer. Uh, so in real, in 4K quality, it, it looks pretty awesome. Um, but especially also, you're seeing it like recorded off of my screen, so that's even going to degrade it some more. But to get the point across, th th this is what I'm going for. So here's the scene. It's playing. Now, this is not lit by practicals, this section of the scene. Um, I can tell you that just off camera, on the right side of the frame, was a light that was very close to the, to the fridge. There's the fridge here. It's very close. And what I did was I shot it sort of across. Like if I'm, if I'm the actor here, the light is just out of sight of frame here and pretty close to the back wall, but just, just up. And it's shooting this way across him to that wall. I also put a half scrim in. A, uh, a half uh, double scrim. And what that does is it cuts off. Now, see, the light was closer to this, this wall. So I put half the scrim in so that the light hitting this wall was dim, but the other light coming across and going that way was not as dim, wasn't cut at all. So that's sort of getting too far ahead. You don't have to worry about that. All I'm saying is there is film lighting in this scene, too. Also, if you see behind him here over his shoulder, there is a backlight. I had a, I had a small, uh, I think it was a, a 300 watt uh, ARRI light dimmed down. It looks pretty hot, but it's, it's, it was dimmed a little bit. It's up on a C-stand in the corner of the room just, just uh, above the frame. Um, I don't know if there's a wide shot here. Okay, here's the wider shot. So you can even see right here this is, where the, this is where my film light, just behind the actor, this is where the film light is hitting the wall. And it's very close. It's just outside of the frame. So probably up to about here is where the, um, the scrim was. 
So basically, when he walks over here, I didn't want him to be blown out, so I put the, discrim, the half scrim there. When he walks over to this side, he's walking into where it's not scrimmed, so basically it's even, because the light is closer to him here, and the light is further away from him over here. But once again, but check this out right back here. This lamp is a practical. There's nothing, there isn't a light that's outside of the frame that's making this orb of light right here. This lamp is literally just lighting the wall, and it's also lighting a little bit down here. And you'll see why. Later in the scene, he walks over and he sits down. And then this becomes his key light when he sits down. So check it out. He's walking around. He's uh, trying to call his brother on the phone. Now check it out. Right here, literally just above the frame right here, is that airy light on a C-stand, so it's boomed. It's, it's on a stand and it's boomed out. So here's the stand and here's the boom and the light is over here. So we walked it into the frame, but just put it right above the edge. So if this was the stand, whoa, if this was the stand here, the stand is just outside of frame, but the arm is right here. So that's where it is. So you don't see the stand, you don't see the light, but it is, it's literally right here and it's shooting right at the back of him. So you can see this hair light coming from here. Um, what we wanted to do with this scene was make it look like a film noir scene. We were going for that shadowy look, like working with the shadows. And what I wanted to do is, and you could also see on his shirt, he's, his, his key light, which is actually hotter than the hair light, his key light is hitting him, but you can see it's, I have the barn door on the light up a little bit, so it's cutting the light just at his shirt. So if, when he goes to sit down later on, he's gonna exit his light here that he's in, go into an area of shadow, and then sit down on the couch where he's lit by the key. So check it out. Now watch, he goes to sit. Now he's in complete shadow right here. Well, not complete shadow, but he's in shadow. He's lit, his back is lit because the practical is hitting him. But just in this area, see his face? He's in shadow because I have the, 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 his key light from just earlier in the scene is cut right around here. You saw it on his shirt. So he's in an area of shadow right here. But as he sits back, his face is lit by the practical. All of this light hitting him, you can see from the shadows and the ripples of his shirt, all this light, and you can also tell from the shadow here, is coming from this practical right here, lighting him. So now he went from one area of the scene where he had one key light, he sits down, and now he's in another key light, and that key light happens to be the practical. So, I love using practicals. Also, by the way, as a disclaimer, that film is called The Homeless, and it was shot with my good friend Cody, who directed it. He wrote and directed it, and I was the DP. Um, if you'd like to see any trailers or anything, or if you'd like to see um, how, that, how the film's coming out, it's not released yet as, as of this moment. Right now, it's February 2014. Should be coming out in the summer of 2014. But go to Cody's YouTube page. Go right here. Here it is, here's his YouTube page and subscribe, and we'll be putting up trailers and things on, on his YouTube page um, for when the movie comes out. I'd, I'd love it if you go over there and subscribe now so that you'll be, you'll be notified when the, um, when the trailers and stuff are put up. If you're in the New York area, maybe you can come by. When it's done, we're gonna have a screening party, and uh, you know, you can send him a message on YouTube, send me an email, send me, send me a message, whatever. We'd, we'd love to show it to as many people as possible. But to get back to um, the question, yeah, so practicals. I love practicals. Whenever I can use a practical, I try. Now here's the thing. Sometimes, like in that situation, I actually had to switch the light bulb out. It, that, that was Cody's apartment, and that light bulb that was in there was like, I don't know, like a, I don't remember, like a 100 watt bulb, 75 watt bulb, I forget. But because we, had, because we, were, we knew we were gonna use that practical, I actually ended up putting like a 35 watt bulb in there. So, I, it, so instead of dimming it, I switched the bulb. But that's another thing you could do too. You can put a pocket dimmer on that kind of a lamp and dim it down. You basically, even though it's a practical, you still want to try and control it as much as you can. Um, I even, in a scene, had a lamp as a practical and the top of the lamp was making a very, very bright spot on the wall that I didn't like. But the, but, and the bottom, the bottom I couldn't really see, but the top was like really bad. But through, it had a lampshade. The, the actor was on this side and there was a lampshade, he was exposed properly. But the part where there was a hole in the lampshade hitting the wall was very, very bright. So I ended up taking a piece of frost. It's, it's a gel, it's like a softening gel. It's called frost um, or opal, whatever you want to call it. I ended up taking it, measuring the lamp, cutting a square and taping it in there with some white gaff tape to control the spill coming out of the top of the lamp. 
So even though you're, you, you want to use a practical and it's just cool to have a practical, you still have to still keep in mind of controlling it, just as you would an, an ordinary light. So just as a recap, older movies and the older Hollywood er era of, of cinematographers shunned practicals. Practicals, well, I can't really say that, but I would assume that they're, they didn't even think to use practicals. They were just props. Nowadays, in, in, the, in the, the world we live in, in this, everyone's you know, making movies and the independent cinema and all that stuff, sometimes you can have scenes that are lit only by practicals, and, and, and that might even be sought after. Um, so do they really like the subjects or not? Yes, they really like the subjects. They are lights, and you can use them as you, in your tool bag. Um, are they dimmed up or down? They could be dimmed up or down depending on the, the scene. If you can get yourself a dimmer from Home Depot or some hardware store, get a dimmer, have it in your tool bag ready to go so you can on the fly just dim it if you need to. Um, are they a consumer light or a film light? A light's a light. It, uh, the bulb in that practical was a bulb from a hardware store. It's a light. It doesn't need to be any crazy expensive light bulb that's for cinema. It's just a light bulb. Now moving on to the second question which is kind of related to the first. He says, how do you mix together different temperature light? As in an exterior night with moonlight and artificial light, uh, or an interior day with different sources, uh, like window light, stuff like that. Um, it, if I had to guess, it seems like you already know the answer. Um, but for people who don't know, j j just, just, just from the fact that you said temperature, someone who's not familiar with film terms would say different color light. They would say it's blue outside but it's orange inside or if I'm if it's an exterior if it's an exterior night scene with moonlight it would be like a bluish color but in artificial light like a street lamp that would be like an orange a yellowy orange color. So to the uninitiated one might say like if, like if you didn't know the word temperature, you, you would, the question would say, how do you mix different colors of light together? But you're saying, how do you mix different temperatures together? So that leads me to believe you know, you know something about lighting because in the lighting world, when something is a different color, it's called a different temperature. The reason why is because the wavelengths of light correspond to um, the Kelvin scale of degrees. Kelvin degree scale is a scale where zero is absolute zero, where m molecules stop, you know, atoms stop vibrating, and it can ju it just goes up from there. This the degree increments are a Celsius degree, but they they go up from there. I think body temperature is like 300 degrees Kelvin or something, but um, orange light is like 3,200 degrees Kelvin, and blue light is 56 5,600 degrees Kelvin, which so that. I mean, I mean, you would think, well, if body temperature is 300, then how, how could it possibly be that hot? It's not, I'm not getting burned by touching this. I really don't know. I should do more research about this. But it just, it, it just corresponds, corresponds to the wavelength of the light. So red or orange light is around 3,200 degrees Kelvin. And then as you get bluer, you get to like 5,600 degrees Kelvin. So theoretically, the temperature is getting warmer as you get bluer. The degrees, in other words, the degrees are getting higher. You think to yourself, well, if, if, you know, if I'm cold, I'm at like 32 degrees Fahrenheit or I'm at zero degrees Celsius. If I'm hot, I'm at you know, 40 degrees Celsius or I'm at you know, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So you think cold and warm in, in that sense, you would think lower temperature would be colder makes sense, lower temperature, you know. But in terms of the wavelength of light, the color is backwards. When you're warmer, in terms of orange, warm being, being next to a fire, you know, warm in, warm in the emotional sense, oranger, you're a lower temperature. 3200 degrees is warm, lower temperature. Daylight is usually around 5,600 degrees. Blue daylight is usually around 5,600 degrees Kelvin. That's a higher degree, higher temperature. So even though it's got a higher temperature, it's a colder look because it's blue. And emotionally speaking, um, the light that's hitting my face right now coming off of this computer screen is colder looking. I look colder on this side of my, on this side of my face, emotionally speaking. Ice is blue. 
You know what I'm saying? So, and on this side of my face, I have a tungsten light hitting me, and that's 3,200 degrees Kelvin, and I look warmer, in, emotionally speaking, in, in, in what we're used to. But it's opposite. So this side of my face is colder, but it has a higher temperature. This side of my face is warmer, but it has a lower temperature. Why do they do this? I don't know. It's the same with f-stops. Why is a lower number of an f-stop a larger aperture? And wh why is a smaller number, I mean a larger number, a smaller aperture? f-22 is tiny. f-32, tinier. f-4, large. f-2.8, larger. f-1.4, huge. 1.2, even huger. Why do they do this? Why is everything backwards? I don't know. But it is, and you have to deal with it. Now, it's a great question because right now I have mixed lighting. Um, so you want to ask yourself, what's the emotion we're getting out of this? Now, I'm, I, I look like I'm in front of a computer because the tungsten light, the room light, is orange, but I look like I'm in front of a computer emotionally because now my face is blue. This is also a practical because the, it's the monitor that's actually hitting me. So this kind of goes back to your other, other question. Are the practicals really lighting the person? In this sense, totally. Especially since you can see the monitor. The monitor's in the shot. If the monitor wasn't in the shot and you didn't have a monitor around, you could take a little light with a blue gel and you know put it in the scene and shoot it at me. So that would be a film light with a blue gel, but you'd think it was a monitor even though you couldn't see this. You know what I mean? I could be typing and pretending like I'm typing, but really it's a film light with a blue gel hitting me. So you can totally fake people out. People would never know the difference. So how do you mix different color, you know, how do you mix different temperatures together? Well, I'm doing it right now, like accidentally. You just have one light that's orange and one light that's blue. One light that's balanced at 3200 degrees Kelvin and one light that's balanced at 5600 degrees Kelvin. And then look at your frame and See if that's reading as, as day or night. So right, t right now it's night, right? And it feels like night. It act as I'm filming this, it actually is nighttime because I'm at work. I know this looks a little different from what you're used to seeing. So I'm at work and it is actually nighttime out. But really, the windows in here are so far away. I could, it could totally be daytime right now. I have, these, I have the, 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 the lights off. I'm lighting myself with a tungsten light right here. But, and so I have the fluorescence off right now because I don't want fluorescent lighting. But if I had the lights on, it would look like daytime. In fact, let me show you. So now, it's nighttime out. It's like, it's like 8 o'clock, 8.30, right? You can't tell. Emotionally speaking, you see me here, it's blue. But the, what's lighting me is tungsten. What's lighting me is orange. And I have the camera set for the orange. So I look a little warm. But everything else in the room looks blue. It's just the fluorescent lighting. It's, and it's just the monitor hitting me. But for all intents and purposes, if you were to put some sound into the sound mix right now of birds chirping and cars going by and daytime sounds, you would completely think that this is daylight right now. You'd, you'd completely think that this is 2 in the afternoon or 11 in the morning. But it's not. It's nighttime right now, you know, speaking. But just looking at the frame emotionally, the light that's back there is blue because it's coming out of the fluorescence. And the, the thing that's hitting me right here is orange. So there's that, there's that contrast. I, my skin tone is a little orange and the background's a little blue. So that feels like it's daytime. Now I just did a change. Look at this. I shut off my tungsten light. So I'm a little dark here now. But I also changed the white balance in the camera to make sure the background isn't as blue. So what does this feel like? I'm not sure, I can't decide. Is it daytime or is it nighttime out? Does it feel like I'm in an office? This might feel like I'm more in an office because the background is more white now. So I, it's still, still 8.30, it's still nighttime, but what, what does this feel like to you? Now I changed the white balance in the camera, so now my skin tone is still around the same, it's still orangey, but look at the background. The background is now whiter, oran more orange, because I changed the white balance in the camera. So this is a completely different look. Now what's, what's, what's going on here now is that there's no mixed lighting anymore. All the lights are bluish. All the lights are the same temperature. The monitor is around 5600. These lights are around 5600K. So they're all blue-ish. 
but I change the white balance in the camera to compensate for that. So since there's no more mixed lighting, everything looks a little bit more even. I'm darker here because I don't have a, a, any daylights hitting me over here. Um, the light, the lamp's off. But watch. Now, because I changed the camera to make the blues back there look a little bit more white, when I turn the tungsten light back on, I'm going to look really orange because since the camera is making blue white, orange will look way orange. Watch. Here, it's going to happen right now. Now I'm a lot more orange right here. But what does this feel like? I don't know. Does it, what, how, how, what's the emotional you get? From, for, for me, I can just tell right away that I look a little overexposed. I don't know. I look a little weird. I've got this, I got light from the fluorescence hitting me up here. That looks kind of weird. Um, my skin tone's off. I look, I look weird. I look too orange. But if I were to change the, the white balance in the camera back to 3200, back to compensate for this light, then the background would change back to blue. It would look exactly like it did before. So this is mixed lighting. I have a tungsten light hitting me here, and all the lights in the background are, are around 5600K. I don't know what this feels like. I, what does this look like? This, to me, it just looks wrong. I'm, I, it just looks weird to me. Like It just looks like bad color. So let me take a second, change it back, and we're back. Now the, I changed the camera back from around 5600K to 3200K, which is pretty much any incandescent light bulb is around 3200K. So this looks correct to me if we're going for office daytime, to me. And plus, you can always mess around in post. You can, I, can, I could mess around with this post, but I'm not going to. I'm going to put it up raw so you can see it how it really is. But I don't like the mixed lighting. I'm not a big fan of mixed lighting unless you, unless you need it to tell the story emotionally. And uh, the story of this is just to have good lighting. So I'm going to shut that light back off. Here we go. Boom. I hope that explains some things. Um, I don't know if I really answered the question. I, like I, you, if you've seen any of my Ask Steve, you know I ramble on and on and on. Uh, and hopefully you got something out of it. If you have any questions, please leave some comments. I check the comments. I read them. I respond to them. So if I missed anything, please comment. I'll reply to you. Uh, or if you have any questions, I'll, I'll just reply right in the comments to you. Once again, if you're interested in that movie, The Homeless, Please subscribe to Cody's channel and you'll get updates and see trailers and awesome stuff like that. Also, you can like the Facebook page. Uh, I believe it's just facebook.com slash the homeless. And there is going to be a website for the, for the homeless, uh, which I will link, put a link in the description and I'll put a link right here if it's up. I'm really proud of the film. I think the cinematography, I'm proud of, I'm proud of my work on it. I think I did a good job with the cinematography. Um, we shot it on the red, so it looks amazing. Uh, and I would love it if I could share it with all of you guys. So please, once again, please subscribe. To, um, please, please subscribe to Cody's channel and get the updates. And that's it. So if you have any questions, um, you can comment them in this video. Send me a message, anything like that. If you have any requests for any tutorials, anything you want, please let me know, and I'll, I'll get to it hopefully eventually. <laughs> I've just been so busy, obviously, at work and, and doing things. And, but I wanted to take some time out of my schedule and, and devote some time to uh, this channel and to, to, my, to my subscribers and watchers. Oh, speaking of subscribers, if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel for, so you can get updates on all of the uh, tutorials that are coming up in the future. So, um, all right. Thanks for watching, and um, happy filmmaking. Peace.